What, you guys are leaving already? That's it? You want me to, should I fuck off right now? What's up? Um, hi, I'm in from Los Angeles. Um, been there for a little while now. When I first moved to LA, some friends and family were worried about me because I'm from a small town, I moved to a big city. And uh, one person in particular, an acquaintance of mine, not a friend, an acquaintance, that's an important word for this story, sent me in the mail a big switchblade. Um, not like a knife and a couple of books and a, or a knife and a shirt, just like a knife in a box with a little note that said, be careful out there, Lisa. I was like, what the fuck, Brian? <laughs> What's going on? Are you inviting me to a duel? Like, at least write me a riddle so I think my death is going to be fun. You know, like, this is scary. Um, and I was a huge idiot at the time, so I was like, whatever, I'm, I'm an independent woman. I can handle myself. I'll carry a knife around. And I was walking around my neighborhood one night practicing opening it, you know, like a totally normal non-psychopath. Um, <laughs> it's the middle of the night, and uh, I started really thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute, what if somebody attacks me? You know, like... Like, shit, what if I'm walking alone at night and somebody comes after me and all I've got on me is this knife? Like, am I really going to stab someone? Like, morally, no question. But just the time it takes, it's not a warning device. You can't be like, hey, man, get back in the bushes. You know, like, you're there. Like, once you stab somebody, you're committed to that person. You're stabbing and stab. You're there all night. Now you have a body to move and someone to kill. I just don't care about anyone that much, is, is my point. You know, like, I, I can't imagine, like, spending that much time with another person. It's too much. It's too involved. Plus, if you ever watch those crime shows, the true, tr the true crime shows, whenever the, whenever the detective walks in the room and they see the person's been stabbed to death, immediately they're like, well, with somebody who really loved her, that's, we know that for sure. You guys into those? You guys don't watch? That's all Americans watch, is people murdering other people. That's it. We're like, fuck Yeah. <laughs> rob them and then murder them <laughs> that's all i want to see uh i hate adele uh i know that's like illegal to say here or something isn't it um i'm sure she's a nice person but like i'm tired of hearing songs about heartbreak from a married woman like you found someone adele shut up move on you know <laughs> zip it up like i want to hear songs about heartbreak from someone where if you turn up the volume loud enough you can actually hear them slicing the wrist in the background like that's what i'm looking for you know just someone who can't go on one more day you know uh, I've been single for 10 years now, which I think is an accomplishment. Uh, I did it. <laughs> 10 years and forever. Um, I've been, like, I don't mind it, but now I'm at the point where I've been single for so long, I don't even understand how people get into relationships, you know? Like, whenever a friend's like, oh my God, I'm engaged, I'm like, what? <laughs> and I just imagine that equation from Goodwill Hunting, and I'm like, you. Yeah. You bought him a sweater one time, and now he wants to spend the rest of his life with you? The, the math is bad on that. Show your work. What happened in between, you know? Uh, I'm on the road a lot, so I'm by myself a lot, and I eat dinner by myself a lot. I did tonight, and it's fine. I don't mind it. Uh, and whenever, But what I do mind is if I'm having dinner by myself somewhere, and there's an extra chair at the table, because of course there is, because that's how fucking tables work. They'd set them up for two or more. They don't set tables up for one. It's too sad. <laughs> So if I'm sitting there in my dumb chair, inevitably some happy couple will come over and they're like, hey, do you mind if we take this chair? We see you're not using this chair. You're never going to use this chair, you fucking lonely bitch. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Leave that chair. That chair is like a life jacket on a plane. I know I'm never going to use it, but I want to think it can save me. So if you could just leave that for me. That's a trick joke about how you're not going to survive a plane crash, you guys. Uh, you see that? Uh, I haven't been in a relationship in 10 years, but I have had friends with benefits. Do you guys do that here, friends with benefits? No, not really. That's where you start, that's where you start sleeping with somebody you already know and trust, uh, and then you accidentally fall in love and have your heart ripped out of your chest. Uh, those are not benefits. Do you understand? Those are fucking side effects. <laughs> That's like if you got a new job and your boss was like, hey, uh, we're going to provide you with housing and three months holiday pay and every Friday I'm just going to punch you in the face. Like, why, why would you do that? <laughs> it seems unnecessarily cruel. Uh, <laughs> the, guy, the guy that I was dating or fucking or talking to, I don't know, it wasn't up to me. You call him and ask him what that was. Um, it was like one of those things where right away I was like, oh, I'm in love with this dude. You know, like two days in, which, you know, you can't say that because then you're crazy or whatever. Um, so I'd say other things to try and like just see where he was at, you know. I'd be like, I just, I just really like you. You know, I just want to tear your face open and eat your insides. I just, 
want to unzip your flesh and climb inside of you like footy pajamas. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I'm like, whoa, don't get weird. I didn't say I love you. You know? Relax, dude. Chill. This thing happened. One time we were having sex. This happens to everyone. Uh, but we were having sex one time, and he was like, oh, my God, the condom broke. And I was like, oh, my dreams are coming true. Um, not... What do you want me to say, I guess? Wrong answer. My married friends are always like, oh my God, love makes you do the craziest things. <laughs> Just makes you do the craziest things. I'm like, yeah, you shooting heroin into your eyeball? What the fuck's going on over there? <laughs> Fuck you. Love doesn't make you do anything crazy. It makes you do like a little bit more for someone else when you feel like it. Like, you got an extra five minutes, make a sandwich for the other person. Like, that's where love, like, heartbreak makes you do the real crazy shit. Like, I'm checking someone else's horoscope and taking it seriously. Do you understand? <laughs> I have like $3 to my name and I'm giving it to a psychic. I'm like, tell me my future, witch. What's going on? <laughs> Help. <laughs> People in Los Angeles are really into like all that kind of shit, the psychics and whatever, uh, which I think is funny because it's like, I don't know, like I like to read my horoscope and I'm like, oh, that's funny. I'm going to have a nice day or whatever. I don't really take it seriously, but some people take it really seriously. I was at dinner the other night and there was a couple next to me and the guy's credit cards decline. Which, by the way, if your credit cards decline somewhere, just give the person another fucking card, okay? It's, a, it's not a big deal. Like, this guy made a whole thing out of it, and he's like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. And I'm like, no one knew, and now they do, because you're screaming, you know? And he's like, <laughs> I'm calling my bank. I'm like, it's 11 o'clock at night. Your bank is closed, sir. Um, <laughs> but the woman's, like, trying to make an excuse for him, and she's like... Yeah, you know, that, that actually just happened because Mercury is in retrograde. I'm like, holy shit, how strong is the magnetic pull on that card, sir? <laughs> you better wrap that thing in foil. I don't want you, like, fucking with the planets or anything. <laughs> don't want you messing up my day. Uh, I'm into uh, really hyper-masculine guys. That's my thing. Uh, just taking a quick audit of the room. Uh, <laughs> No guys in Los Angeles. Um, I'm into really hyper-masculine guys. I think it's because, like, I'm the only girl in my family, so I come from a lot of testosterone and hitting and whatever, and so, like, I need that. You know, like, for a while I try to date sensitive guys, but then it turns out, like, you want to fuck your family or whatever it was that Freud said, you know? Um, I mean, not my whole family. I'm, I had one hot cousin, but he died. Car fire. So that ship has sailed. <laughs> I really, I tried to date this really sensitive guy for a while, though. He was, like, really into yoga, and he had healing crystals and shit, which was new for me because I've never dated a woman before. So I was like, okay, <laughs> give me a second to adjust. And I realized that that wasn't going to work out long term because one night I was at his house and we're sleeping, and uh, he wakes up in the middle of the night in a panic, and he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And it woke me up. I was like, oh, my God, are you all right? What's going on? He's like, I, I was having a nightmare. <laughs> that someone was breaking in <laughs> and I couldn't protect you. And I was like, yeah, that's just the truth. Like, don't even worry about it. I've got a knife in my purse. I'll take care of things. Um, I'll handle it. Go back to sleep. Uh, I'll leave you on this ass play. Can we talk about it? Uh, we're going to. Um, not for me. I'm just going to say it's not for me. Like, a little bit is fine. Like, you we're all eating ass, right? Like, it's 2018. <laughs> but, like, a dick's not going in there. I'm not, I don't know why. I feel like I need to let you guys know this right now. My problem with it is, like, people preparing, though. Like, my, friend, my girlfriends are all, like, think they're, like, being so naughty. And they're like, oh, I'm going to eat his butt. And I'm like, so did your grandma. Um, <laughs> like, those holes have been there forever. Um, <laughs> we didn't just evolve to have them. Uh, I do, the preparation bothers me, though. Like, my, my girlfriends are always like, oh, I'm going to let him do anal tonight, so I'm going to get a colon cleanse. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you need to stick a finger in my ass to get your dick hard, that's your problem. <laughs> you pay the consequences for that, dude. <laughs> like, I had a veggie shake for lunch. I'm real high on fiber. Okay. <laughs> I refuse to swallow a man's cum and then feel shame when you find poop in my ass. Like, where did you think I keep it? Um, that's going to be it for me. I'm Lisa Curry. Thank you so much, you guys.